This video tutorial will look at statistical process control, also known as SPC. Now, SPC is actually there to help managers in terms of making decisions. It actually highlights only when decisions need to be made or to warn that perhaps a certain procedure is approaching a point where maybe a decision or intervention needs to be made. It's used a lot in operations, certainly for businesses that are really keen on getting ISO accreditation for quality assurance. It's one of the steps you'd probably expect to see as it maintains production within certain remits, certain tolerances. So look at the terms in turn. So it's statistical as it makes use of data. We use things called control charts, which we'll look at slightly later, to monitor current output against that range, that tolerance, that deviation, if you wish, of actual performance. You could be looking at a number of different things. Anything which can be quantified could be what we look at in SPC. As I said, SPC looks at processes, so particular routines, things, very discrete tasks in the business that we can actually measure to see how they're going on. So, for example, on chocolate bars, if you've ever seen the E26, this is actually to do with statistical process control and actually the fact that the weight of a chocolate bar has to fit within certain remits. So, for example, on this chocolate bar, 26 grams. So, we could be looking to see whether our chocolate bars are over or under this and whether it fits within a certain tolerance that we're allowing. It could be in terms of rejected products and the level of defects. We may have a certain target in a business that we're trying to adhere to, 2 or 3% perhaps, of rejects. We can see whether we're moving outside of acceptable boundaries for that. It could be used in the service industry, number of customers served per hour, number of items sold per hour for staff. And it could trigger a whole range of other things, such as training to support if there are issues identified. And it could be used in manufacturing. How quickly is machinery working? Can we work quick enough to meet orders, but making sure we're not going too quick so that actually quality might be compromised? And finally, it's linked to control. So why would we want this? Well, to actually maintain certain predefined acceptable limits. Again, we don't want to be working too fast because quality might be compromised, but certainly not too slow because then our output will be limited. Things like ISO 9001 accreditation, a quality stamp, will actually look that things like SPC are actually in place. For a hotel, we need to make sure that our standards hit a certain point, otherwise we might lose that fifth, sixth or even seventh star. As mentioned before, in chocolate bars, if we sell too much, our 26 gram bar is actually 30 grams, that's 4 grams of waste chocolate as we're giving it free without advertising that to customers. And again, if we're under, there's actually legislation in place, the e mark, that actually means that we could be prosecuted for this. So it's important that all these things are considered. So this is a control chart, and this is often used in statistical process control, SPC, to show the variation, the deviation of actual performance against that target. So here I've got a green line, which is perhaps a target of our business. At the side we have a measurement, and on the bottom looking at time frames. Now SPC works by looking at samples of work, whether it be every hundredth item, once an hour, whatever the measurement we want to take, but it's based on a sample, so it's not necessarily every product. And over that we'll actually map our samples to see how we're fitting. Now it's hard to say, looking at this data, whether this is acceptable or not. So we need to bring in control limits. Now the upper control limit is the highest level that we're happy to accept. Above this we need to intervene. So for example, if this is the weight of my chocolate bars and the green line is 26 grams, I don't want necessarily to be over 28. I don't mind 27 because it will probably balance out the next batch might be 25. But certainly I don't want to be going over a certain amount because it could cost me money. So this is the area, the red area, where I'm probably going to be looking to intervene if my data moves beyond my limits. Our lower control limit does exactly the same, but obviously at the bottom end of the scale. So this could be in terms of productivity of staff. If they're dipping below the targets that I expect at the level of training for them to be reaching. You can see here circled in yellow, we've actually got one occasion where the data moves below that lower control limit. So if this was a customer service situation, this is customer satisfaction, then actually this may be trigger some things such as training, will certainly highlight to managers that we need to intervene, there seems to be an issue here. Some businesses go further and actually include what are called warning limits as well. This just flags up at this point that there may be an issue occurring. So it's slightly stricter tolerances here. We won't necessarily flag action, but it would suggest that action may be needed. So we, once again, we can see circled in red and the upper limits. These are actually within the control limit, wouldn't necessarily take action, 
but these two occasions might suggest we might have to look at this and bring it to our attention so we might need to plan for action if it gets any worse. And on the bottom, of course, there's three occasions where we're actually into that lower limit, one of which goes into lower control limit, but two in the warning limit. Again, highlights to managers there may be an issue. The good thing about control charts, all the time we're in the black section in the middle, we're actually within our tolerances, managers don't need to know this information. Everything's ticking along and there are no real issues. But we can certainly see if there's a pattern over time. So what possible actions could we trigger if we jump outside of those control limits? Well, depending on the application, it could be more training. It could be the fact that we need to look at conditions. Maybe employees aren't motivated. Maybe there's issues in terms of working conditions, which for some reason learn their production. So these are HR links. Perhaps it's the equipment they're using. Maybe it's getting to the point where it's towards the end of its serviceable life, and actually we're moving further and further away from that acceptable tolerance, that deviation from that standard expectation. So our chocolate bar, if we're constantly seeing it's going well beyond those tolerances, we may decide that's the time to replace, or perhaps repair equipment. It could be, if we're into quality, that this is a time we need to review our Kaizen approaches. Perhaps they're not working. If there's issues here that are actually to do with wider things that could be solved, then maybe Kaizen could actually support us here. So it might initiate either using Kaizen, or perhaps review what we're doing if it's not working as well as we want to. It could also mean we need to spend some money. So it could be, if we're looking at sales, it might trigger the fact we need to spend some more money on advertising. It could mean we have to spend more money on staff training, or again, it could be capital expenditure, getting some new equipment. So let's have a look at the pros and cons to weigh up and sum up. So the good thing about SPC, Statistical Process Control, is it can help us to raise the level of quality and consistency of a business. Sometimes the level of quality is not important, it's whether it's consistent for customers. We don't want to be over the top, because that's costing us money necessarily. We don't want to be too low, because obviously that could cause further obvious issues. As part of that, certainly if we're looking at a production example, this might pick up errors and issues early, so therefore it could reduce waste. In manufacturing, help us to meet that e mark I was talking about. Again, this is really well recognised. It's actually Europe wide at the moment, and new legislation is on its way in. And a lot of products are actually expected to carry this. So this is something that will actually help us in terms of compliance. We can actually make sure that batches of products are well within tolerance. And finally, it's actually given us some data to help us to make a decision and some intervention. We can see that something's not gone wrong. By using SPC, we can then see the results of that intervention. If we've made a decision, some training perhaps, or some change of equipment, what impact has it had? Has it improved the tolerances of our SPC? So we can actually see both what's led up to a problem, the decision that we've made, and the impact of that decision. So disadvantages, there is always a downside. So the issues here are actually to do with the data itself. So it does rely on accuracy of the sample. Remember, we're talking just a sample, not every product. If we were measuring staff output, and, we, and staff were aware we were measuring them once an hour, at what time that was, then obviously staff could try to increase output at the point where we're capturing the data, which then would give an artificial figure. So bias is possible. Equally, we might miss a very poor quality product, and actually the sample just picks up maybe a lower quality or actually fine quality. So it doesn't capture everything, it doesn't ensure quality of every single product or every single service that's offered. Introducing SPC can be expensive, it does require technology and certainly in production that could be quite a vast and significant amount of capital out there. It doesn't actually help us to identify what the underlying problem is, and I mean by soft applications and those featuring HR, human beings. We don't necessarily know why our level of quality has dropped for an employee, we just know that it has. So therefore we'd probably need further specialism to actually get to the bottom of those answers. So it doesn't have an answer for everything. SPC does cause issues for employee morale. If staff feel they're being watched all the time, big brother syndrome, it might cause their general happiness and satisfaction to lower. And finally, this method only highlights the problem, it doesn't give a solution. So it's not an all-inclusive, all-encompassing system that will actually solve all our problems. So once we've found the problem, we still need to find that solution, and we're going to need further expertise, whatever that might include.